was on the rolling sea when my God speak to me. I was on the rolling sea, let it roll. I was on the rolling sea when my God speak to me. I really loved that with like Maya just you know, coming out with her pure, strong voice, setting the tone for the play, and then having the layers come out, and then the actors coming out. Let it roll. I thought that was really beautiful. Pete came to me and asked me to do the obstacle play this year. Let's try it. Yeah, so you guys front line, all of you go this way. I was terrified because it's an all-school endeavor. You have to involve everybody. And the idea was that we would be working with not just theatrical elements, but we'd be working with, of course, the music and dance, and we'd be trying to bring together all of these different talents that people in our school have. There's costume, there's, there's singing, there's talking, there's dance, there's music, and so they're just really interrelated. All School Play is a really great opportunity for everybody in the school to come together and to do, to do something as a school. Yeah, the play is really good chance to get to know each other and uh, yeah, all people play together. Uh, the idea behind the old school play grew out of the, the original notion of an old school trip. If you're going to take the entire school somewhere uh, to visit a, a city, that you should give something back. Uh, that you're visiting that place, that place is hosting you, uh, and then if that place is hosting you, then you should be also offering something. On the all-school trip we travel to a city and a lot of what we do is disperse and study different aspects of that place and, and we take in a lot of, of information, we meet a lot of people. It's definitely not a one-way situation. I mean, there's, there's, there's an exchange going on on all levels, I think, throughout the day on the all-school trip. The all-school performance, I think, is, a, is an opportunity for us to really give something to the communities that we're traveling to. I often refer to the all-school trip and the all-school play as being kind of the working model for the way life should be led here. We decided early on that we, that we would uh, tackle this thing with a creative team. It's like a way to like combine all the teachers' like different styles into like, like one play, which is cool. Seven faculty members collaborating on directing this thing. You have 85 students who are collaborators in the process. Any movement that I gave the students to do was generated from them. I didn't make movement and then say, you know, you do this now. It was just really fun because I did something that I didn't, wouldn't usually have done. Like, creative movements like really weird with Asher. <laughs> so it was like different. Some of the most exciting moments were those places where we would actually be collaborating on a scene. So where Amrita would come in and, and do a folk, a folk song. The last few rehearsals right before they went on trip, everybody put so much effort into it and I, I, I was just so proud to be a part of Buxton and to be a part of the All School trip. As it turned out, the, the retirement communities that we went to were terrific. They all know, maybe they never hear the drum, I've been drum, like so close before. Not just we show them, they show us too. The people that we met were with it, they they loved the show, they were they were very attentive, they were asking questions, they came up to all the students afterwards. Like everyone has a chance to show what they do, because I feel like a lot of people, they do things that don't really get performed, and like this was a nice way to like for everybody to come together and like do something that we could all show to the public. I love the story of the couple whose wish is that they die at the same time. It's my favorite part of all the, of the Ovid stories. They whisper, but let me die still loving, and so never die. I basically directed them as, as pretty straight narrative theater pieces, but I think that was a good way of, of moving in and moving out, that it sort of it framed the whole experience. Great. But it was all a little bit theoretical until first rehearsal, and the music came in and was just it was transformative. And suddenly for the first time the show really, really came alive. Right away the script was very eerie and and so I kind of tried to find some eerie songs. All of us kind of were reading the script and sort of saying, yeah, I can I can kind of hear these songs that we've heard Amrita working with. And that's just kind of the way that we work at Buxton, I think. And folk singing was really cool because it's like all a cappella and we get to like sing songs that, you know, you wouldn't do in chorus or something. So it was really nice. It was great. They all had different ideas about what kind of 
sound slash music they wanted. David's so wonderful. He came in with three or four students who he'd been improvising with and working with and talking about the show with. And at one point I think I told him that I wanted just something that sounded like little girl music. And he just pulls these little pieces of music and teaches them to the orchestra and then they sort of riff off of them and it's this sort of structured improvisation. God's coming to earth from a purely music standpoint, if this was Earth, and what's the farthest away from that in a theory way you could possibly be? And, and you know, the most distant key would be a tritone possibly away from that. So if this is Earth, and this is the gods, now, that showed up a lot, that particular relationship in this piece. Midas? The Lord is there! Miss Bacchus, I uh, heard you have a follower of mine? A lot of water stuff in this. Nine out of ten water music things are in six. Because six, forever, for centuries, depictions of somebody on a boat or a raft is, is in six. Because that's wave-like. Okay, so we're sitting around and there's five, six of us in here. Okay, well, I'll do this. And then... Okay, can't, you know, that's something everybody can handle, and the flutes have certain notes to play, so... So the scene is Eros, God of Love, and Psyche, the soul. Eros has no sight. He's blind, and that's what we worked with in movements, like... How, how can you know through touch or through just like sensing a presence? So I'd have them do one movement and not look at each other, but try to be together with breath. It was great to see the two dancers on stage taking chances, like one of them partially blindfolded and struggling to keep her balance on stage. And that was what I told her that it was about. I just want to see you struggle to keep your balance. But that takes a lot of guts, and it's sort of like, do you keep one eye open while you're doing it and kind of cheat? Or do you actually trust the movement and trust the audience? When you're working on something for that short of a period of time, it's not dance one, it's not dance two, dance three that's working over the course of the whole year. You're not necessarily sure what each person is capable of in terms of what all their strengths are. But at the same time, in that short period, you see people grow an awful lot also. And they're able to work with their strengths. I had young ladies with me that aren't dancers, but they had this experience. And in the format of the all school play, I think is wonderful. I wanted to bring sort of the murky, spooky, water elements, which you ended up seeing grays and blues and greens, that kind of very muted palette. We decided on this one concept with this Appalachian look, and that made sense with each scene. I could sort of see that in each character. I didn't want to go for that totally realistically. It just sort of fell together. It required a lot of teamwork, kind of. Like, costumes had to make sure all the clothes were there, and makeup had to make sure people were like on time because they had to be out at a certain time and it was like really good just working with people. It was, it was cool. The, the message here was very, um, very inspirational. Everybody could connect to it on some level. The, the all school play, the whole all school trip is kind of like a microcosm of the year. The all school play, it was a really good thing to choose for Buxton since there are so many people who are good at all different things. I think it feels great for the students to um, to see what they've done. The all school play, the community coming together in all of its diverse talents and, and um, diverse styles and creating something. And that's, that's what our daily life is, we're creating a community. Nice to see them trusting each other. What's exciting to me about that is just the democracy of it, just that there's no, there's no tyrant, there's no um, dictator. It, it sort of, it's a metaphor for the way that we do things here at Buxton in a lot of ways. The students are incredibly empowered and the faculty are a 
group of equal individuals who are working with the students to, to, to make the life here and to create education. I think order comes out of chaos and I think that something when you have chaos there can be some like real life and uh, something really exciting can happen. We all love to hear a good story told. It's my favorite, absolutely my favorite piece of what we do here.